Hey up, welcome back to part number three of my MiG-21 build. So in this episode, we are going to work on the painting side of things. So, again, this beautiful aircraft right here in this German scheme, the white, the blue underneath, and all the red, yellow, and black parts going onto it. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so this week, as I said, we're going to talk about start with painting. So first thing to do is I'm going to prime it. As always, I use my Mr. Servicer 1500 Black, which I use for everything. Just love this stuff. Mix it about 50-50 with some kind of lacquer thinner, like self-leveling thinner or any kind of lacquer thinner. This is a lacquer product. Um, and you should be good to go. You can mix it a little bit more. I, I find if I mix it too much, though, it gets a little kind of runny. I kind of like the 50-50 or maybe like kind of 40 paint, 60 kind of percent. Um, thinners just kind of like a little thicker just it goes I find my, my style of airbrushing and whatever my pressures and stuff It just works a little bit better for me, and it doesn't obliterate any detail at all It, it goes down beautifully, so this is my primer choice as you, as you know from last week. We got the jet all ready to go We got the um, foam in remember put the foam in the front and the back so we don't spray all the um, the nozzles and everything a nozzle singular um, We've got the nose and paint separately. We've got stabilizers and we've got a fuel tank as well So while well, we've got paint and the gun we'll paint all that at the same time, so what I'll do is um, I'm go for the spray booth and get this painted. Um, fortunately, it's a little model, so I'm very excited. I've been doing a lot of big projects recently, getting through tons of paint and primer and stuff, so this shouldn't take much at all. So we'll get this painted up, um, and we'll come back, and we'll talk about if we're going to do a shadow coat or not. So we're primed up. We're looking all kind of stealthy in the black. Went down beautifully. So what I'm going to do now is, um, well, firstly, I notice this whole side here, when I point of priming is obviously not just to get the base for the paint, but also check for imperfections. And if you look right here, I'm sure how you can see the light. See, there's not quite happy with that. And then whole, this whole side here is a gap. So I'm just going to fill that with some um, Vallejo um, water based putty. Really easy to put in and wipe it off the q tip. So I'm going to fill those little gap right here. The other side looks perfect. So it's hard to see the black on the camera. Um, but that's just that one spot right there. This side, for some reason, just, I don't know, got a gap in there. So again, I'm just going to fill this, take care of it. Um, we'll do that. I'll let it dry. And once it's dry, as always, I'll come back and do a shadow coat using my Game Air Dead White 7201. Um, I talk about this every time, but this is nice, thick. Um, it's acrylic, but it covers the black really well. So I'll basically just appreciate it. Rather than doing all black lines, I do it the other way around. I do black, and then just hit all the panels, send all the panels of white to break it up and create kind of like a modeling kind of um, undercoat for the um, coat above it. And being white on top, it's going to be, um, it's definitely going to show some pre-shading. So let me take care of that little spot right there for some reason. I'm not sure why it turned out that way. Um, probably user error, no doubt. And then I'll get a shadow coat on, and we'll come back. Okay, so shadow coat's on. Really easy. Just spray white on periodically all over it. Um, no, no kind of methods of madness. Just messier the better to create that kind of shadow coat, um, which you'll see hopefully the top coat going on top. So that's done. It's been drying for a few hours, it's good to go. So what we're going to do next is we're going to put the top coat on, which is white, and then the bottom is blue. So we'll do the white first, mask it, and then we'll do the blue underneath. So the white, as you may know, may know or may not know, in scale modeling, you do not want to use a pure white or pure black for any kind of major services. For a lot of switches and a lot like detail parts, no problem at all. But if you're doing like a whole aircraft, never ever paint it in like a black or a white. Always do a slight shade off. Um, so, for example, if you're using black, I always add like it. I use rubber black or NATO black, or you can just add a touch of green or blue or gray just to kind of knock it off a little bit. With white, um, I add a little bit of buff. So I have, I have a white pre made up because I use so much off white. Um, it's basically just XF2 white with um, about 5%, if maybe 2 to 5% buff mixed in just to kind of knock it off a shade, make it more of a slight cream, um, which is more to the eye, makes it more kind of um, realistic on scale models. So this all mixed up and thin, ready to go. So I'm going to spray the top with that um, and the top of the um, stabilizers. And then we'll let it dry overnight. Um, really an hour, you can mask it, but it's kind of early evening. So I'll just let, at this point, I'm busy the rest of the day. So I'll just leave it. And then tomorrow morning, I'll mask it up and do the blue first thing. Um, so yeah, enough waffling. Let me go to the spray booth and um, get the white put down. Okay, so following morning, so the white's all done. I actually mastered up already. So you see, I mastered up. Uh, foam for the gear to kind of so I don't get paint on it and the lower areas I just put some little blue tack in there um, a white tack actually which is 
So this, one, this guy. So you do a blue and a white version. The blue leaves um, oily residue, the white doesn't do that. So the white's the way to go. Uh, you get two box packs of this on Amazon for like $6 shipped, Amazon Prime, and you keep reusing it. So I mean, I've had this, I actually just got my first packet in like three or four years. Um, yeah, so it lasts forever, you just keep reusing it until it loses its stickiness. Um, so yeah, so I've done that, the bottom, so the bottom gets sprayed blue, mastered up. Um, actually, I just remembered actually the front should be curved, so I just need to do a curved bit right here first, and then I'll spray it. Um, mask it all up to protect it. You can obviously do a stabilizers too. And the um, fuel tank, and we're using per instructions H323, which actually have a couple of these bottles in stock, um, which is the um, Acquia. So, unlike Tamiya, it's Tamiya dries pretty quickly. This stuff can be a little tacky. So, I'm doing a thin coat, but I want to leave it, you know, a good few hours for it to dry before I do anything with it, just so I don't get any fingerprints on it and that kind of stuff. Um, I mix this with self-leveling thinner to make it more of a lacquer. So it's like Tamir, it's a, it's a um, Acris is a, um, like an alcohol based acrylic, but you mix it with um, either acrylic or lacquer um, thinners, either or. So that's it. So I'm glad I caught myself there. So I'm just going to do a little curved bit, which is right here at the front. Um, mask that off, get it painted, and then we'll come back. Oh, also one other thing too is just need to paint, um, once the blue's dry, I'm going to mask up and paint the front, top, sorry, the front, the top bit here around the canopy um, with the black as well. So we've got three. So white we're done. We've got blue coming up, the black on the front. Um, obviously the, the green for the, um, the front nose right here, and that should be it. So yeah, plenty of work ahead of me. So let me go ahead and get going with this. Okay, so we're done with the painting. So a little bit of progress since you last saw me. So white's obviously on, did the black on the top. The blue you saw already, um, the green, you can see it's much easier just to paint those guys separately and just glue them on. So a little PVA glue, I use Mod Podge, you see in the background right there, dollar from Dollar Tree if you have it in America. Um, just stuck this on and stuck the cone on, um, again, super easy to paint separately. One thing I should have done is this guy right here, I should have painted that separately. Um, it kind of made a little bit of interference with masking for this, back end and then the green. So um, not a big deal, just a little bit extra masking. So I masked it up, painted the green on the bottom. And then the exhaust back here, the kind of metal at the back um, where the exhaust nozzle is. Um, so what did I use for that one? So the darker color, well first of all I painted it all steel, extreme metals. And then the darker bit, but I taped it off and then the darker bit kind of close to the front, I came back with some gun metal, LP19. But it was a little bit too, the contrast was a little bit too much between the two. So what I did then was I got some Alclad steel and I just basically very lightly and very gently, just very delicately just misted um, to blend it all in basically. So give it a little bit metal kind of texture, like kind of some contrast in the metal and also to blend those two colors in, which worked out really good in the end. Um, a little bit overspray, I kind of like that because it adds some weathering actually um, up here. So I didn't bother masking and cleaning it up because I'm going to weather that in. Um, yeah, so it's quite a lot of painting on this little guy. Um, obviously the stabilizer the painted, white top, blue on the bottom, um, but yeah. Oh, one thing, LP11 for the uh, wheel wells, I'm not sure I mentioned that, but silver LP11 um, is what I used to paint the, the, the bays. Um, and that is pretty much it. So, say, pretty complex, a um, lot of masking stuff. I do enjoy those kind of schemes. So, um, one thing is you can't really, if ideal, really paint the back part, mask it, then put a tail on, because it's joined to the whole spine area. It's, it's, it's not worth it. I mean, you want to get that. Fit it, fit it on first and paint it all together rather than separately. So, yeah, I think the way I did it was right. Just the bottom bit probably separate would be the easier way to paint and mask this guy. Um, but yeah, looking good. Um, you see the white, I used obviously the off white with a touch of buff in it. So it gave that kind of, you know, so it's not bright white in your face. So, what I'm going to do now is I am going to give everything a clear coat with my usual LP9, like a nice gloss coat, just to seal everything in, making it look real good. Um, let it dry and then we'll come back and we'll start adding the decals next week. So it's lots of real nice decals on this one, so we'll make it pop with all that, that beautiful, um, you know, the red and the, um, the yellow and the black all, all across it. Um, it's really gonna bring all this together. And then plus we have the wash on top of that. It's gonna really look pretty nice, I think. So that's pretty much it. Uh, hope you enjoyed this one. Um, just get kind of really high level talking about the colors I'm doing and the masking and stuff. Like I say, next week we'll work on the decals and onto weathering um, and go from there. So hopefully, fingers crossed, these decals go down nicely because I said there's tons of them and large ones going all over this. So um, I'll keep my fingers crossed that they'll, they'll, they will conform. 
But yeah, anyway, thanks for watching. Um, as always, appreciate it. If you like this video, please consider subscribing, liking, all that kind of stuff. And I'll see you next week. So till then, see ya. Goodbye.